One situation that programmers find themselves in frequently is tree manipulation. Okasaki wrote a very clean, readable mechanism for balancing red-black trees. Let's open it up here. As you can see, there are four tree patterns that convert to one template, this tree in the center. If this procedure is applied every time a node is added, the tree will be balanced. Of course, this diagram is not executable code. For that, you have to look down to the bottom of this page. Unfortunately, while terse, this code lacks the readability of the tree diagram above. A better approach would be to put the diagram right in the program and have that diagram serve as both the pattern and the template. What you see here is actually runnable code. These first four trees at the top are patterns, while this last one at the bottom is the template. Let's run this code. As you can see, the tree is now balanced. Now, let's take a step back and think about what we're actually seeing here. Programming is a form of communication, not just to computers, but also to other programmers who maintain and build off of their programs. Programming languages are therefore one of the primary tools that programmers use to convey their ideas in programs. However, no one language is the best for expressing every idea. To solve this problem, enter domain-specific notations. Each domain-specific notation is a little language that exists to solve roughly one problem. These notations are highly suited to one problem at the cost of being usable in other situations. The tree balancing situation is not unique to this example. Frequently, data structure manipulation will use the pattern of drawing the diagram in ASCII above the code and then having a textual representation at the bottom. People try to cope with this communication problem but using ASCII diagram in comments hardly works. First, comments will frequently get out of sync with the code they're describing. Second, developers are still limited to using ASCII to draw their diagrams. Instead, we create interactive domain-specific syntax extensions. An interactive syntax extension is a new type of visual syntax production that can be mixed in to an existing programming language. An editor is a specific instance of an interactive syntax extension. In the tree example, there is one interactive syntax extension, the tree extension, while there are five editor instances. But this is not a visual programming language. Text is still a perfectly good mechanism for most code. Rather, it's a hybrid that mixes textual and visual programming mechanisms. Let's do another example. How about we play a game called Suro? Suro is a game played on a grid with players taking turns moving their tokens based on tiles they put on that grid. At the start, the grid is empty, and each player's token is placed somewhere on the edge. The player starts their turn by drawing a tile and placing it next to their token on the grid with the orientation of their choosing. Each tile contains path segments that connect edges to each other. The player then concludes their turn by moving each token to the end of the newly extended path. Note that this tile can connect up multiple paths. Now, imagine trying to write an implementation for this game, including unit tests. 
you could write your test cases in text like this. While not too bad to write, it is pretty unclear what's going on here. Using interactive syntax makes these kind of tests easy, with two types of extensions, tiles and boards. The tile extension supports connecting paths to edges, either via drag and drop or just filling out some fields. In either case, however, the tile will give a graphical representation of these connections. We can then place these tiles directly inside of a tile rotation test. A board is simply a grid of tiles. Here is a unit test for inserting a new tile into that grid. With these examples under our belt, let's see what goes into an interactive syntax extension. An interactive syntax extension is composed of four parts. First, a state. Second, a view, third, an event handler, and fourth, a code generator. First, each extension needs state. For the tile extension, this is each connection, while for the grid extension, it's each tile. Second, there must be some mechanism for rendering the state to the programmer. This rendering determines how an editor gets drawn to the screen. Third, a handler mechanism must update the state in response to events such as mouse clicks or keystrokes. The first three parts are analogous to the model view controller pattern. The last element is a code generation mechanism. This is what actually connects the editor back to its surrounding program. For the Suro extensions, this just generates data literals, both the tile and the board. But for the tree extensions, they also generate match patterns and expressions. From the perspective of a language extension, you can think of the state as the syntax for the extension, and the code generator as its semantics. Now that we know what goes into an interactive syntax extension, let's talk about how a programmer creates new ones and inserts editor instances into their code. Previously, programming languages had a notion of runtime code and compile time code. Runtime code obviously executes while your program is running, while compile time code executes while a program is compiling. Frequently, compile time code is used to generate runtime code. Some call these macros. Interactive syntax extensions introduce a new concept, edit time code, which is code that runs as you edit your program. The define interactive syntax form ties these three phases together. It defines a new type of extension for use in runtime code, defined by a code generator that runs at compile time, and a view and event handler that runs at edit time. Programmers insert editors into their program using a gesture. In this case, by pressing an insert editor button. Once the programmer specifies their editor, the IDE inserts the editor directly into their code. Programs using interactive syntax extensions are stored in plain text files. Developers can actually modify these programs, including the editors, in tools like Vim 
that have no knowledge of interactive syntax extensions. As a takeaway, interactive syntax extensions allow developers to mix textual and visual code into a single program. By using a linguistic solution, programs can contain the syntax, semantics, and visual interactions directly, rather than relying on external tools. In this presentation, we've seen examples of new interactive syntax extensions defined with text. But sometimes the best tool for defining a graphical environment is itself a graphical environment. By being linguistic, Define Interactive Syntax allows programmers to visually define new interactive syntax definitions. This idea can be scaled up to a full-blown interactive syntax GUI builder. You can find more details in the paper. Thank you for your time. If you're interested, you can find our interactive syntax prototype on GitHub. We've also recently started to work on a prototype in the browser using ClojureScript. You can also find this prototype on GitHub.